Pop Up Flamby's Advent Calendar. Hello, Mina san. What does you have, Flamby days? Japanese 101, and uh, here's my microphone even plugged in anymore. Yeah, it, it is. It actually is. So, we are going to do some craft theory for normies today. Don't be fooled, no, it's not a combinatorics problem, well, it basically is. But we are working on the craft, so we are going to make it more clickbaity. We are going to do some combinatorics today, to be honest. <laughs> What's the task for today? Well, we want to find the amount of shortest paths to go from one point to another in a directed graph. Imagine this graph as a coordinate system where you can jump from one point to another. But what does directed graph mean? Well, it just means that you can reach certain points only using certain movements. So we can namely go from left to right and from up to down. With this out of the way, we can already get started. Since we are in a directed graph, it's already kind of given what a shortest path is, how it is constructed, where well, you can only take a certain amount from left to right and from up to down to reach this point. And it's really already given. Let's take a look at a simple one. Just a graph with the point 0, 0 and 1, 1. And one of the shortest paths would be to go from here to there if you draw arrows in. Those represent the steps. And you see, there's 1 minus 0 arrows. You can draw in between from left to right. So you can expand this to bigger graphs, but you are going to get the same result that you have C minus A arrows. You can draw in between those points to go from left to right. So we have C minus A from left to right. Analogously, you can go from up to down using 1 minus 0 arrows. The same spiel here. You have D minus B arrows from up to down. And this is already good. So how exactly is the shortest path constructed where you are just going to add those together because you have to go from left to right somehow and from up to down to reach this. And they, they could look quite different, those shortest path. You can go just here to there or here to there or you can go zigzag path. Yeah, it does work out. So the shortest path corresponds to, well, C minus A plus D minus B arrows. Okay, we have found the amount of arrows which lie in between those points corresponding to shortest path. But we wanted to find out the total amount of shortest paths, meaning here comes the combinatorics in. We are just going to take a look at all the different paths we can possibly have at the moment. And for this I would just like to take a look at Factorial because if you have three books and you want to Take a look at how many times you can arrange those books in a different way. Well, you are going to have six ways to arrange those three books. This is three times two times one is three factorial. So if you have n books, you are going to have n factorial ways to arrange those different books. Different books, okay? So just imagine we have differently colored arrows in between those points at the moment. Meaning the total amount of different paths is going to correspond, well, to C minus A plus D minus B factorial. But here comes the thing, our arrows aren't really different or you can say you are always taking steps which are one meter apart. Okay, meaning we have to get rid of all the possible ways to arrange those left to right arrows and all the possible ways to arrange those up to down arrows. You can take a look at this differently using books once again. Imagine you have two red books and one black book. Okay, and how many ways are there to arrange those? Well, overall you can arrange those in six ways, three factorial. Okay, but two of those books are the same. So we have to get rid of two factorial. So the, the amount of ways to arrange those two books. So you are only going to end up with three ways. It does make sense. So if we have a black book here, then we have two red books here, for example. We have a red book here, black book here, red book here, and so on. Then we have zero, zero, one. So three ways, it does work out. So what do we have to do? Well, we have to divide this right here by C minus A factorial, the ways to arrange those arrows from left to right. And also we have to divide this term 
by d minus b factorial the amount of ways to go from up to down differently. So the amount of shortest paths is going to correspond to this term over c minus a factorial times d minus b factorial. And then we are already done. This is the amount of shortest paths and you can try it out for yourself. So if you plug in 1 and 0, you are going to end up with 2 in the end. So you have two shortest paths. You can expand this to bigger graphs. And there's also another way to write this right here using the n over k notation. You could say the binomial coefficient. You are basically going to end up with this term being equal to c minus a plus d minus b over c minus a being equal to c minus a plus d minus b over d minus b. So those two are equal to this expression down here. And I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend the channel if you like. And well, you can support the channel in many ways. Don't forget to activate the bell button and yeah, share those videos. This is already quite important. And up until the next video, have a, people love this, Feynman lectures on physics day. And Papa Feynman, I really like you, but I just want to throw you away because you are a book and I don't like books. But I like you guys. See ya. Nein. Nicht nur.